Hello there, this is Hans Foschner with Napkin Engineering. This is a short video on the Insole software focusing on a single panel uh, predictions. I'm using version 9, uh, rev, uh, revision 19. And so let me get started. So here on the left hand side we have the different construction uh, tabs. Uh, so here with install you can do STC calculation, sound transmission, class calculation, uh, impact isolation, um, STCs for f ceilings and walls, uh, IIC for floors, um, rain noise for roof application and then also STC for glazing and then there's also a porous uh, correction that we can apply. So let's get started. Up here on the top left, uh, we set up the, the panel. So we are just focusing on a single panel. Um, so here um, we are at panel one. We have multiple layers of, of materials that we can um, put together. So let's say we uh, start with the gypsum um, board. So here I type in into this field uh, gypsum and uh, the install software will uh, select or kind of show me all the materials that have gypsum in the name in the editor or material editor so we can select any of those so let's maybe start with a 5 8 type x gypsum board if you click on it here in the center with your with your mouse uh, you get the uh, parameters so the default thickness is uh, 0.63 inch which is 5 8 uh, the density of the material is 43 pounds, 43.1 pounds per cubic feet. The young modulus, damping, and so on and so on. All of the information that are related to this material and how it's stored away in the material database in Insol. You can change those materials on the fly right here. Uh, by just changing it uh, right here, 45 for example, and uh, it should update the material. And of course, when we make it heavier, it should just kind of go up in the uh, STC. So on the, the bottom right, we see the STC predictions. So here we have the transmission loss from 550 hertz to 5 kilohertz. For the STC evaluation, only data from 125 to 4 kilohertz is used and the STC is basically this curve um, kind of shifted until the differences of the levels above that curve is in the sum less than two decibels so these are 16 third octave frequencies so 32 by 16 it's uh, maximum uh, reduction of two um, and then we look at that curve and whatever is showing at the 500 hertz in this case it's 28 decibels that is the STC value the RW is very similar uh, except that there uh, we start at 100 Hertz and we go up to 3.1 kilohertz so these numbers STC and RW typically are only uh, maybe one yeah maybe two decibel maximum different but in general they are very very similar uh, another thing in terms of the uh, reference uh, curve of the STC, the maximum uh, difference in, in one octave or third octave band cannot be more than eight decibels. So I think in this case, this difference between um, yeah this curve and this uh, uh, predicted level is uh, probably the maximum that we uh, allow here. Anyway, so here we can change this. Um, we can add additional materials uh, or different layers to this uh, gypsum board. So we can make it from one layer to two layers to three layers. And then, of course, as we add more layers, the weight goes up. And then, of course, the STC overall increases. If I go back to one layer, I can also define a uh, reference. So here we could put in reference one layer gypsum board and then we can go from here and then also compare it okay how about two layers so this goes up by uh, approximately six decibels because we are doubling the weight and then uh, of course three uh, three layers then four layers then again here we have again a doubling of the weight 
So if you remember the original STC, we started at 28 decibels. We doubled the weight now uh, twice. So we are now at STC 40. So this is all following just the mass law. Um, here in terms of this curve, uh, I want to mention here, the, we have the coincident frequency. So here we have the mass reference of increase every doubling in frequency, six decibels. Here we have the coincidence frequency, so that's where the wavelength in, uh, in, in air uh, is coincidence, uh, coinciding with the bending wave or the length of the bending wave in the gypsum board. So of course when these two waves uh, coincide in terms of their length, uh, we have a, um, kind of a, a situation where the board is conducive in uh, transmitting uh, the uh, sounds from one side to the other side and that's why we have this dip here right here we can uh, let's go back again to just one one layer and um, here i want to kind of show a few things in terms of um, if you had a situation where you had like some sort of a fiber on this uh, gypsum board we can add that into this calculation uh, let me uh, change uh, this frame type here to uh, no frame type so there should be a no frame uh, so none no frame but we add for example a fiber on the other side maybe two inch fiber and then again here we have an increase of about five decibels just by adding the fiber on this side of, of that wall uh, so that would be of, of course on the side of uh, where your sources are so that would uh, additionally decrease the sound going through that board now if we can go back to this panel number one so this is this panel here we also see that we can have multiple layers of different materials here so let me go back and uh, set that to zero okay and let's go in panel one and let's change this to a concrete and so here we have six inch of concrete and uh, again here we can also adjust and say okay it's not a six inch it's only a four inch concrete and the program will automatically adjust the curve now here you can see the difference in terms of the coincidence frequency uh, the gypsum board is fairly flexible so the coincidence frequency is uh, fairly high in frequency so there it's in the 3k range now with the concrete the stiffness of that concrete board uh, will shift that coincidence frequency to a lower uh, area so in this case it's uh, somewhere around 200 and yeah by 294 hertz so it uh, shows up in the 300 hertz uh, third octave band and uh, so here we have again the mass line um, below that and then here we have a slight increase of uh, curve above the coincident frequency so below here we have a, a approximately like a 60 b per doubling in frequency and here we have i think uh, approximately 90 b per doubling in frequency now we can again uh, add a different layers to that so we can have a separate layer and then uh, if we can for example add a layer of stucco to that and uh, make it whatever thickness and uh, again we are increasing the weight and it lifts up that STC this is as far as I want to go with the uh, single panel uh, like calculation maybe a few things on this uh, uh, GUI up here in the top uh, we see the uh, predicted uh, transmission loss value in octave bands and then below that we have a description of the uh, panel right here and um, then we have here in the bottom right the chart so here again this is the reference that we had earlier this is the green dots are the uh, prediction for the current uh, assembly that we have right here and then we can also look at the table and in the table we see the prediction so the prediction again from 50 hertz to 4 kilohertz the uh, STC value 
and then here we have also the comparison that we uh, saved away earlier with this one gypsum layer so here we can turn this off and uh, then it doesn't show up in the chart so we can add comparisons up to two comparisons and then also up to two references in here the references could be something that you copy and paste out of an Excel spreadsheet from a uh, measurement survey and uh, so if we had like um, a certain data set available um, we could uh, paste it in here or, or type it in and say I, I just make up some numbers here and then we turn on the show and then in the chart we'll see the reference levels in this chart so that's kind of how we can, can compare predicted and measured data this concludes this uh, first introduction for the single panel for Insul thank you for listening